<laughs> okay. Now I know it's there. This is the perfect example of the one, two, three I told you about the positions. Now that we're all here and feeling uh, borderline religious, I want to share something with you. The reason I'm so sarcastic, because it's fun, the reason I'm so hard on you is because people that are tentative, I really get after them and make them either ball or step up. Because the horse weighs more than you do, and if you don't step up, you're going to get hurt. That's why I pressure people so hard the first day. And then if they're not back the second day, then it's pretty well settled. Uh, you know, that's just the way I do it, okay? I'm not a blatantly rude yank. I'm a man that wants to keep you from dying. And when I see that you're scared or you're afraid to step up, I, I, that's why I push you so hard, okay? I know I feel better, okay? There's that perfect noise I told you about. Now listen. Hear that breathing? Yeah. That's because I am putting this horse in a frame and this horse right here is getting closed on the throat because it's used to pushing and the muscles under here are pretty strong. So now when I go the other way and it tries to push, it's closing the airway. And uh, you learn that hanging around the racetrack. That's how I know it. So you don't call the vet. You just get the horse and ride it. And the horse will relax their muscles when they yield to you. And you won't hear the noise anymore. So that's one of the clues I get when I get a horse in. Especially like a... Uh, trotter, racer, thoroughbred, anything that was supposed to run fast and then you shut it down. Endurance, horses. Some of them sound like the bunkhouse in the morning. That's what you hear. You don't need alarm clocks on a ranch, trust me. You got a bunch of old lungers standing smoking cigarettes and you can hear them at 3 a.m. every day. I had to go up here. Now the reason that I want everybody to stand is because now you can focus on what I'm doing without herding cats. I'm preparing the horse for a stop. I'm gonna back up. This is an age old training tool. You stop a horse and back it up. This horse today, there, now. Every time you back it up, you stop it, you back it up. Pretty soon they start to know they're going to back up, so they stop better. This is where I want this horse's head. For me, the pole should not go below the withers. I don't want it behind the bit. This takes time to fix. The western bit solves a whole lot of problems. <laughs> I forgot. This is the horse show contest. They need to trot! You get them outside and trot them long distances and you can get that out of them, hopefully. With collection, I can get more done with the horse. If you'll notice, where I don't ride is over here. That's half a horse. Remember that. You're not riding the whole horse when you're over there. Now that turn was with nothing other than my calf. All the stuff I talked about and you heard half of it because of the wind and because after a while, no matter what I say, you don't hear it. And I'm fine with that. When you roll your leg, it means something to a sensitive horse. This is a sensitive horse. And then remember, I'm not putting this on this horse. It's already here. What I'm trying to do is to put the last coat of paint on. 
herself being tentative. Are you, do I look okay? You look lovely. Okay, is everything mm -hmm. Is the light good? Yeah. What are we trying to say? Is it a. Okay. See, I'm not. The horse wants to lope because they spend half their time life loping. That's why I don't do it. No. Outside is how you make a horse. Okay, now we're ready for the bridle. And cut! Make up! Now this is polite. I'm sharing with the horse. This is what's coming, horse. This is what's going to be coming. You need to get your feet unstuck and quit getting behind the bit. Alright. I can't slide it through my hand because of this horse. It has to be here because of this pitiful bit. Whew. Now, everybody can go, oh my God. All right, that's over. I only had to do this once. once. Exhale, sit down. Whew. Okay? That was one hand. Other direction, brand new world. Brand new world. Left, right, right, left, da, da, da. Bueno? Okay. <laughs> Listening. Instead of gawking around. There's the stop. Okay. So now you are going to quit being a cross dresser and ride one handed western. Yesterday the horse went just straight through the whole deal, remember? All right. Now I'm one handed with a flat hand so I can assist the turn. It's not straight up like we have the other horse. Different set of geometry. You got to understand the horse is sensitive. They know the difference between this and this. That's why I'm in here doing these steps. My legs are off. I'm as tall as I can be. I'm going to drop my spine and relax my entire body when I'm ready to stop. Whew. Bueno, that's what I wanted you to see. You've got a wonderful horse and you don't need the other. Okay, now, footfall. Once again, here's my dressage mirror. In the evening, it'll be over there. If you don't know how the feet are landing on the ground, at early morning you look down and watch it, but don't watch like you do, Eileen. <laughs> Sit up and look at it. Because when you're not centered on a horse, you're betraying it. I do all this over -ex exaggerating to school, but when it's all done, what you want is for somebody to say, how did you do that? Then you know you're riding well. While I babble, horse processes. That's why I never shut up. That, don't do that crap. No. Horse is more comfortable loping. There's your stop. Bueno? Okay, now, here is why the hand is flat, what I'm gonna do now. I can assist with this bit. Now, I said it yesterday, and I'll say it again. If you ride a bit like this two-handed, it's called a correction bit. That was the smartest marketing word that the man that made this communist thing it was the best word he ever came up with because everybody thought, good, I can correct it. Well, there's a bit of humor in my lineage. My bit is called the missing blink snaffle. 
Now there's two ways to take that. There's the Neanderthal theory. <laughs> and then there's no link in the middle, get it? Yeah. But I prefer the first one. <laughs> Little barnyard humor. This is the most important part. Give your horse time to process this. If you don't, they will resent it. Anyway, if they resent what you just did and it's a big war, okay, don't just walk them through it. Go out the other side. You'll feel, if you have collection, you'll feel the muscles in the back say, okay, I'm back on the payroll. I spent, I don't know, 30 minutes with the horse the other night that said no, 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 and no. And I said, well, yes. I thought of my bride, what do I wanted to have for lunch, how far it was to the next spot, and then all of a sudden the horse's back relaxed and it said, okay, I'll do it. Get it? You can never train a horse, but you can outlast them. So, I'm not going to use the word overtrain, but when you ask an athletic horse to get athletic and they start making that noise, that means it's kind of been overdone. So you need to be more subtle about it. You need to be able to spin, jump, whatever it is you do, and then when you're done they go, so, what else you want to do? Does that make sense to you? That's how you get along with a horse. If you go out, leave the house with the agenda that he's going to spin 12 times left, 12 times right, you're dead in the water. You're, it's over. Forget it. Deb has watched me spend more time putting the saddle on than riding because I have a colt that went out, did that move, I get off, jerk the wood, and get another one. So just think of all this stuff, please, because I'm here repping for the horse. So now we slow it down, and this is called a schooling walk. Because now I can put the finesse on it. And what I'm saying is my hand is bumping. And my horse is in a schooling walk right now. I'm waiting on the nose. There. Now I'm going to ask my horse to turn. Thank you so much. This is the fun part for me. Anybody can crash a burn in a circle. Now I'm going to raise my right shoulder and subtly hint about a turn. I couldn't get this if I didn't do that. Get it? Wow. If there was a cricket in here, mm -hmm. you're fine. But you didn't see the retarded roll core look. So we're gaining. Yeah, herself told me he wouldn't stand still to saddle, you know. That you, I think. You think? <laughs> Another observation. You make a horse. Client buys it. You've rode it for six months. Client takes it home. They love the horse. They want you to stop by and see it a year later. You pull in. The horse sees you and goes to the back of the paddock. <laughs> Don't ever take it personal. <laughs> if they're scared to death, you're going to take them back and put them to work. I've had that happen several times. Never sent your horse with the foot back. Now, for those of you with the birthday cake that looks like the fires you had, I'll show you how to teach a horse to stretch. Never grab a girth with the right hand. We might need another girth. Just kidding, this one will be fine. Anybody that starts colts learns to reach under with their left hand. If you stand back here like a farmer and do this, you're gonna break your femur because they will cow kick you. And you deserve it, you'll never forget it. Now that irritated the horse. Too bad. Starting colts, if anybody cares to, the number one worst possible thing that can ever happen is to roll a saddle. So don't ever think that you're too kind. If you cut them in half with the cinch and they lay down, it's too tight. But if you roll a saddle on a colt and they take off bucking with that saddle hanging under there, it sticks with them for life. I've never seen a horse get over it. Since I know you're all going to buy colts this next year. I used the word colt. I found out the other day that's not what you call them. Young horses? What do you call them? Yeah, no, colt starting. Colt starting? Yeah. 
Oh, okay. You caught up with the vernacular. Ah. <laughs> Now something to note, spoiled side stands still though, unbroke side moves, just an observation, head goes up, horse is bothered, head goes down, horse is fine. Now this horse is already mad, which is fine. But the reason I'm here is because I want my friend to have a safer ride and understand that she can actually ask her horse to do what it's told. Now there's no flies out. See the tail? That's an irritation from me pulling that cinch on that pus gutted horse. So I'm untracking it. Now, it probably won't work on this horse because she doesn't care much for me. Santorina horse. This is not cosmic, it's not religious, it's just simply practical. We've already talked about the knot head, <laughs> literally. You open your hand as wide as you can. Little finger goes on the orbit. Thumb goes on the orbit. Now you have just approached both sides of the horse. If the head goes down, you take your hand away. If the head goes up, leave your hand. If the head doesn't move, leave your hand there. This is how I start colts. That's left brain, right brain. Both at the same time. Later on, all you gotta do is touch them there, and they're fine. That's just an idiosyncrasy I have. When I'm on their back, this is why I had somebody on their saw horse putting your hand here. You try to lower the head by putting your hand there. On colts, it reassures them. That's why I do it. That was shown to me by an old, old vaquero. See how far it reached? It's about damn near the same. Slow down, breathe. You tied the knot wrong again. On the halter. God. Sorry. What? Yeah, I probably did. You probably <laughs> did. Well, that's... Remember, there's no such thing as a little bit pregnant. You either did it or you didn't do it. I'm not going to show you no more. Too late. That hurts because that means you weren't hanging on every word yesterday. Remember to salt your bits. When you take them out of your horse's mouth, dunk it in water and put salt on it. They'll appreciate it the next day. Horse that's hard to bridle. Now my knife could fix that head stall. Thank you, sir. The reason I'm riding this horse is because of its ill-mannered manner and herself needs to see what a good horse she has. And I can't explain it to her. And folks, please remember that that uh, it's a friendly game. Just yell out, hey, Pat. Anything at all. Because this is it. Heckling is encouraged. Now, just for the sake of knowing the psyche of a horse, the reason I rode that one in here is because we did all that every stuff out there yesterday, and it would lose its mind. I wouldn't have the highest percentage of its brain. And I'm not telling you to come to your round pin all the time. I'm just saying that's why I started in here. And it's easier to hear and or see me. Now, I'll show you the difference in collection and how to get it. This is what flat saddle, I call them dressage riders. They contact the mouth and then they make the horse by kicking go up underneath it with its hind feet. 
So you're saying whoa in the front and go in the back. And over a year, as long as their muscles don't bop out of the side of their neck, these ladies get the legs going underneath farther. I get it by riding outside. If I'm walking backwards, I don't have to stop a freight train, get it? It's easier to back it and I can get things lighter. Now where is she? Stay, are you videoing too? Yeah. <laughs> Remember the day when we had crayons? <laughs> okay, now can you hear me plus do that? Yes. You sure? Because yes. I'm going to test you. You didn't tie the knot on the halter. I didn't watch you tie the knot on the hockey yesterday. You told me how low it had to be on the nose. That's more low than what you are. So, Pat. Pat, Jesus. Yeah, it's easier to, it's easier to, to teach, teach them. Pressure. Horses don't naturally walk backwards. Okay? A horse naturally goes forward, so it's going to take me twice as long if they're walking into the bit. So now I get them to walk backwards, and they're like, I don't like it. See it? Yeah. Already. Yeah. And also, when they're going forward, they have an agenda. When they're going backwards, they're like, what the hell? It's all part of the, the way a horse thinks. And I learned this with dressage horses. I rode a lot of them on our east coast, which is New England, which is um, hell, actually. No. You get a 12 year old dressage horse that's at level 75 6, <laughs> you can put your feet on the dash, you can't back them up. They don't back up. They say it ruins the forward motion. But the truth is, is because King so and so, well, and if I try to be kind to them, it's like I told my Mexican friends, their horses don't back up. You know why? Because of all the revolutions Mexico's had, they never surrender. So they. <laughs> They don't back up. They just die going forward. That's the only logic I could come up with. So some king way back when told the guys in all the armor, never back your horse up. Now this is cold jawed. In other words, the mouth is harder than your head. This can be fixed. Okay? That's a six year old Six, team? Six, sir. Six, it's going to be all about your release. I'm staying in position three. There. Now remember, when I'm doing this, I've tightened the quad muscles on my legs to get them off the horse. I don't elaborate on that because I've already talked about it. Now, I'm going to stop, take my legs off, and back the horse. Now this horse, it's almost all three because of the horse wanting to go down. Other horses, it's going to be one to get the nose. There. So this is what you have to do. I'm literally doing it this round, Chris, so you'll remember. This is done at a walk. When you get it good at a walk, then you can move on to a jog. Now the jog, of course, is going to be going forward. But this is called the foundation. All right, now that I've got the horse bending, I can, in fact, start schooling the horse laterally. So, you can watch footfall in the morning, or you can feel it and know when to ask the right front foot to step out. Right now? If the horse is hollow in the back and pushing on the bit, 75% of their brain is on their mouth, get it? Because they're used to, here she comes, I'm going to war with her. You want them to drop that percentage down over a period of time. I mean, really think about that. If, if most of the horse is worried about its mouth, you don't have much of a ride. She's very nicely elevated with you stepping back to the front feet. Yeah,
Hear the breathing? It's not me. For a change. I'm asking for the forehand, right front, out and back. You can make it fine without stepping on, without moving your hindquarter. There. So here goes the horse under duress again. It was all beautiful a minute ago. Now it falls apart. You got two choices. I can over and under, or I can sit here and watch the ears. I can reassure one time. What I'm getting at, with your stature and your strength, if you go to war with this horse, which you've tried a couple times, then quit. That's why the horse does what it does. Well, this is not too tough, what I'm doing right now. But you have to have enough guts to hang in there. And look, I know my biggest issue, and, and, and I know I'm... Would you like to share with the group? Yes, obviously, is that I, I don't release quick enough. And I There's the breathing. Excuse, I didn't mean to interrupt. Did you see this horse? That's, you're gaining. See, yeah. fight or flight. Yeah. I don't mean to interrupt you, but that's important what you just saw. Horse does the same thing. They hold in their breath and say, if you want to fight, let's have at it. She finally figured out, I'm not going to fight. And the horse went, yeah. get it? So that's the other thing to wait for. And I guess what's happening today is you're going to find out that it has nothing to do with the horse. It has to do with you. How well can I present myself to my horse? That's what you're asking yourself. Okay, if it's a big, dull horse, fine. If it's a small, dull horse, doesn't matter. Whatever horse you have, the stories behind them are irrelevant. You know, he came from this or he did that. That's all irrelevant now, from, the, from this day forward. Going behind the bit, one hand at a time to get that horse back where it belongs. This is the tunnel. In other words, I sat and waited. Now the horse chose to start off with a bad attitude. And I'm saying, no, you need to get your head up where it belongs. Thank you so much. Now, remember what I just said. There's that really fuzzy moment, and then when you start again, they've been processing. Then she says, hell no. Or else they'll say, you bet, whatever it is you want to do. I'm giving a chance for the horse to figure out that Pat is not leaving. Now I'm going to ask for collection forward. My legs are off. Forward is a given on this horse. There. Where were we? My seat bones are telling the horse what I want. I know. The horse can waltz. Jitterbug, we don't really want. <laughs> it's kind of an interesting trivia that people sing in the shower, right? Well, cowboys very seldom shower, so they sing out on the range. Ew. Sorry. That was before <laughs> I before I met you, of course. <laughs> Two, three. One, two, three. Sound familiar? Last night when I was out riding, graveyard shift midnight till dawn. That's a waltz, my dear. So this stump-headed dink can do anything you want. Yeah. Will you step up? Good deal. <laughs>